Canada in a snapshot. What this chart shows me is that Canada is in a population trap right now in 2024. We talked about it the last time. Immigration plays a significant role in that. Our birth rate is not increased like we had in the 50s when there was a population growth similar to this. But this one is a way higher population growth that we had since 2022. The next one I will show you is that we have a record low housing deficit in Canada right now. And this has been going on for a while, but I think we fell really low this year much more. The mm. next one I will show you is that the standard of living in Canada has been on the decline rapidly compared to the United States. This has also been going on for a while since 2020, where we kind of squared out here. But since that time, we've been declare, declining compared to the states. So our recovery since COVID is not actually compared to the states, for instance. Um, so right now, compared to the U.S. also, um, our GDP is getting poorer by the day. The next one also shows that we have a labor productivity that is on the decline in Canada. Those are actual factual data out there. It, this one I find very interesting, that the RCMP warns that Canadians <laughs> will likely protest if they find out how poor they are. I think that's actually uh, it kind of oxymoron in my mind uh, because it's, it's like saying we, ac we actually don't know how poor we are right now uh, in Canada. Plus this last one here, actually. There is a warning that the budget this year will be the most misguided budget since the 1930s, post-World War. This is Canada at a glance. And a significant part of everything I've talked about here is the population, the housing market, the productivity rate in Canada, and the budget that is upcoming. I think the budget announcement is going to be tomorrow, if I'm correct. What do you make of all of these? I know this is a lot of information I just loaded you with, but what do you make of that? So I'm going to go, yeah, I'm, I have the, the slides here, so I'll go back through them, but I'll start okay. where you finished off. So the budget, the budget, okay. uh, now the budget was today. Sorry, it was up at, at the end of the day though. So uh, right. I haven't had a chance to really look at too much, but I've read some things online. And of course, they're talking about taxing the wealthy, uh, capital gains tax on corporations is going up to 66% uh, instead of 50%. Uh, personal, right. it, it's 250, still at 50. And then over that, uh, they've, it's changed. So it's a tax and spend budget from what I can tell. When it comes to housing, and th this um, housing plan is part of the budget that we went through uh, earlier, that um, my... That, from what I saw, and again, I did a video on it today, actually, that is the old extend and pretend. So there is things in there that, you know, uh, first-time home buyers can now get a 30-year mortgage on a new home purchase. So 30 years, so you're just saying, well, here, you can take on more debt, because that's what's going to allow them to do, mm -hmm. take on more debt and pay it over longer periods of time. They can uh, take more out of their RSPs now to buy out their first home. So instead of taking 35,000, they could take 60,000 from the retirement funds. And of course they have to pay that back. So that's more debt because it has to be paid back Correct. within 15 years. And I think they added another three years, so maybe 18 now. But uh, so now you can borrow more money from your retirement and add that to your debt. So again, we're just extending and pretending um, that people can afford homes by, by stretching out payments and giving them more debt. They're the charter, the Canadian charter, all those people that were, you know, 72 year mortgages and 95 year mortgages that um, the banks allowed them to extend their amortizations without renewing. Mm -hmm. Well, they want a, they want that permanently done now, the, the Canadian charter. So that again, so now you can just keep paying interest. You're not going to actually pay off if you're one of those people that um, had those variable rate mortgage with a fixed payment. And then it went into negative amortization. You, they're gonna the the new rules say the bank says, well, we're not gonna force you to renew, or there's gonna be options there, so you can just keep paying interest. So these people are gonna be paying nothing off their homes, their homes for years, and just paying interest. So again, this is a a uh, extend your period or extend and pretend that the economy is okay. And uh, this is one of the things that's kind of keeping this Ponzi scheme going at this point too. But again, there's there's mm -hmm. all this all this interest and debt payment 
is going to slowly suck money out of the economy so that people won't be able to invest in their own businesses. They're not going to purchase uh, big items anymore because they're going to be too indebted um, when right. you need, that they need kills to leverage. The class, right? Yeah. Now with, with the rest of the thing, so back to the first, oh, I won't go to the first chart because I, I'm a little rusty on that one, the Canada's population trap, but uh, the next one down, it's, it's again, it is the Canadian, the Canada's population trap, but it's the housing supply deficit. It's record new or hits new record. So of course, what they're saying is, you know, they brought in all these people, all these uh, immigrants, whether they're temporary or students or permanent residents. And of course, there's not enough housing. So we have this population trap where they're bringing in all these people and they knew there wasn't enough housing, but now we're even further behind on housing because of this population issue. And the standard of living is falling, which brings us to the next chart, um, because people, things get inflated. People can't afford rent or they, they need to pay more in rent. So now your standard of living's dropping. I see there's like reports of immigrants or, I'm sorry, not immigrants, um, temporary students or foreign students. They're literally driving to the airport with their leased car that they, you know, they would lease a cheap car and they're just leaving it at the airport. Uh, I talked to a, a mortgage broker a couple of weeks ago and he's a good friends with a repo guy. And he said, he's so busy picking up these cars at the airport. They can't keep up because the students are just fleeing the country because there's not enough work and their the standard of living sucks. And of course, now the standard of living does has gone down because you're living in basements, apartments for mm-hmm. $2,000 a month. Meanwhile, Three years right. ago, you could rent a whole house for $2,000. And this is how the standard of living went down. Now, when I moved to Canada, m- my parents, it was very clear. People would always say, well, why did you move to Canada, right? Because we weren't your typical immigrants, right? We're coming from, you know, the, the Ireland and, and, you know, it was an English-speaking country. And people didn't look at us like immigrants because we didn't look like your typical immigrant at the time. And they say, why, why would you move here? Like, and it was always it was a higher standard of living, a better standard of living that we moved for. Well, it's not the case anymore, obviously. And um, it's shown here in this chart where the uh, has declined, where the U.S. has actually increased um, after the pandemic and we've declined. Right. And it's because of the, the level of debt and the run up in asset prices that people are just fueling or paying for debt every month. And when you bring in uh, massive levels of immigration, now the GDP, of course, has increased, but the GDP per capita has gone down because there's more people to share that total production of the country with. So um, again, that's just a temporary Band-Aid bringing in um, you know, a million plus uh, new residents every year. Mm-hmm. To mm-hmm. And it's, again, we talked about it last time, it's, it's like modern day slavery where you're literally just using them for their money to prop up GDP so they'll come spend money, but there is no real future for them here. And uh, now you see the GDP per capita has gone way down and uh, it's going to remain down until we start producing goods. So, um, right. yeah, and, and it gets us to the labor productivity. Labor productivity the, right. the, the government's policies are, you know, they don't allow us to use our natural resources because of their climate plans and whatnot. So, of course, how, what do we produce? We're the richest country in the world, but we can't produce anything because the government shuts the doors on everything. So, um, and yeah, like everything, nothing is environmentally friendly. Like even solar panels, they have to be produced somewhere and factories and use mining to get the materials. And, but Canada won't even allow mining, um, in most places for raw materials because it doesn't suit their environmental goals. So it's not a very realistic plan. Obviously the government has, it's an ideology and, uh, you can see it doesn't, it's not working when it comes to the economy because it's in shambles and in, in every section we're failing, right? And they even admitted it. I just saw a press conference with somebody and they admitted like we're the lowest of the G7 for G- GDP per capita. And uh, and this was not the opposition. Well, yeah, well, except the fact that it's the fault of the conservatives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think they, yeah, they blamed uh, the, the previous party for it. Um, just like, right. you know, with the housing crisis, they've, They've had almost nine years, I think they say eight years, but since 2015 to, and now they come up with a plan. Like it's when, when, <laughs> when, and we're already past, like they've, they've known about this for years. Like it's been an issue and you know, it's, 
just they come up with it now. Now we have a plan, guys. We're we're our term's almost done. We're you know the the prime minister is about to get voted out, but uh, you know we have the best plan in Canadian history. Um, so yeah, it's it's right. politics, right? So right. So so when I put all of these together, I don't think there's anything novel in saying that this takes out the middle class very quickly because it's going to stretch the middle class into high sum of loan values that they can't pay off um, in their, their, their meager salary that is trying to keep up with inflation and uh, the cost of, cost of groceries, the cost of home ownership, the cost of rental. Uh, before you know it, it's going to overstretch people's personal economy and this is how you take out the middle class, really. And coming from the kind of country that I come from, that's what really takes out the middle class. And uh, to be honest, you know, wait, I, I know some people might come after me in the comment section, but I'll see how this goes. <laughs> coming from, I, I am born and bred Nigerian. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming from the part of the world, it's there that you see the government, especially when they want to do this kangaroo kind of projects that they execute, um, say the the president is visiting one of the states and then you see there is a lot of road construction done overnight, a road sweeping, road clearing. And, you know, students are put back in schools, the schools that were not functional before. Mm-hmm. The current approach by the Canadian government is just a little, you know, a notch up of that level of insanity, to be honest, um, where you're trying to paint a perfect picture like, oh, we're working. But all along for like 10 years, you did nothing. It's just right when you need the votes from the people that you say, oh, now we're going to do something about your situation. 